Well, good morning. Somewhere we're last will be first, and first will be last. So if you got to church late, it's going to be okay. Amen? Your life may be a little bit better these days. Your thoughts may be a little clearer. Your kids may be acting a little better because, behold, football is in the air. Life just feels better when there's football on TV. It's certainly anticipating a turnaround from our great New Orleans Saints that this might be the year. Raise your hand if you want the Saints to go to the Super Bowl. A little interactive homily today, that's right. Awesome. Raise your hand if, raise your hand if you would like to win the lottery. Just raise your hand. Just let me see who'd, who'd like to have a couple extra billion dollars just kind of hanging around. Awesome. Raise your hand if you would like your hair to start growing back. <laughs> a couple of my brothers in the house saying, yeah, that's me. Raise your hand if you want to go to heaven. Okay, if you did not raise your hand, you, you can leave now. I got nothing for you. Like, th that, that ought to be like front and center out there. You know, there's a lot of things that I desire in life. I desire good football. I desire like the weather to be pleasant. I, I desire all of us to have a good day. But you know what I want more than anything else is I want to go to heaven. It's important for us to kind of put that in the context because I think a lot of times what happens in my life is I get a little distracted. And as you know, just life just gets busy. You know, being married, you just get busy and just trying to like stay in love with your spouse especially when you don't like your spouse, amen? Trying to, like, love your kids, especially when you don't like your kids, amen? Life just gets real busy. And, man, you can turn around, man, like you used to be 20, and now you're 30, and then you hit 40, and you don't know what happened, and now you're in your 50s, and life can just pass real fast. kind of sit in church Sunday after Sunday and we kind of stare at Jesus on the cross and we come in every Sunday and I, I, I love watching you pray before Mass. It's one of my favorite parts of Mass and every one of those little individual silent conversations, I know things are on your hearts. What are some of the things that you and I might be praying about? Well, well like two Sundays ago, we, we started this three-week series that we're in and Two Sundays ago, we, we talked about how sometimes we, we want God in our life, but we just can't see Him, right? We talked about how sometimes all we can see is the obstacles in our life, and we, we kind of know God's there, but we can't see God. There are going to be moments in our life where we're going to be facing something, and we're going to need God, and we can't see Him with us. Amen? There are going to be moments in our life where we're going to face something in life and we're going to need God. And we call those storms. Last week we talked about the storms. You remember that? We talked about how sometimes life is hard because other people got drama. Sometimes life is hard because evil exists. Sometimes life is hard because bad things happen to good people. We call those storms. And we're going to need God because we face those storms in life. And then, sometimes life is hard because of us. Sometimes our walk with Christ is difficult and it's challenging not because of other people, and that's really what we talked about last week, but, but sometimes the walk with Christ is tough because of us. I want to thank you for your prayers. I, I've been on my, my personal eight-day retreat. I told you last week that I was going to go spend eight days alone with the one who I love. Yes, believe it or not, I can be completely silent for seven straight days in a row. That's also why the homily today is going to, today is going to be two hours. So, <laughs> No, just kidding. Great week. Just lots of prayer. I, actually, I'm on my retreat right now. I'll go back on retreat tonight. I wanted to be home this weekend for the, the masses just to be with you because I really felt like 
that this retreat this year for me was going to be about the restoration of my priesthood and a real renewal in my relationship with Christ and all that's happened. It's been amazing being with him. My prayer has, has been a lot about how much I love him and how much he loves me. And my prayer has, has been a lot about um, just my priesthood and how much he, he has called me to priesthood. And my retreat has it's been a little un- uncomfortable at times. <coughs> Learned a long time ago that relationships are only real if the conversations in relationships are real. Amen? Yeah. If you're married, you know that, right? Huh? Marriages are only real unless we're talking about the real things. Relationships are only real unless we're talking about the real things. Father Walter Burkhardt is a great Jesuit. He says that prayer is a long, loving look at the real. Prayer. It's a long, loving look at the real. And the Lord has wanted to talk about not only about all the things that I love about me and he loves about me, but he wants to talk about the reasons why I often just kind of live life independent. I have to be honest with you and say that one of the themes of my retreat is my control, my independence from God. Living a moral life, living a good life. But to be honest with you, this is what my life looks like a lot of times. Let me, like, tell me if you see yourself in this. Like I check in with God. God, you're doing all right. I'm doing all right. Okay, you take care of world peace, and I'm going to go over here. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to live my life on my own. And then I'll check in with God again. Hey, God, how you doing? You, you taking care of Egypt? Okay, you go get Egypt squared away. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take care of things. And I'll go in, I'll check in with God. Hey, how you doing? Give you a couple of Hail Marys and our Father, glory be. Okay, you do your thing and I'm going to go do my thing. You ever do that? I do that all the time. Like if we're honest about our spiritual lives, much of my spiritual life is checking in with Jesus. And I just kind of live my life on my own a whole lot. So then we run across this great reading from Hebrews that was proclaimed for us. Chapter 12. And we don't know what to do with it. So a lot of times what happens is we, we, we bump, we speed over it, we just kind of put it on the side and we just move on and let's talk about something more comfortable. Well, I love you. I do. There's a reason I'm home in the middle of my silent retreat to be with you. I I love you. I don't care if the Saints win the Super Bowl, but I want you to get to heaven. Life is not always going to be comfortable, but I I want you to know the Lord. Be be real easy for me to pick the psalm to preach on today. Go ahead and spin something off the gospel and let's just forget about Hebrews because that was a a tough reading. But I love you. So let's look at it together. Amen? Page 30, Missalette. Everybody grab your brown Missalette right there in the pew. Grab the Missalette. We're going to go to page 30. We're going to Hebrews chapter 12, picking up on verse 5 as the author of Hebrews is going to quote some passages from the Old Testament for us. Hebrews chapter 12 on page 30. Let me start reading it. If you can just read it in silence. It says, brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. And then there's the quotations. He's quoting Deuteronomy and the book of Proverbs. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. Stop right there. What's he saying? He's saying that sometimes, believe it or not, God is going to discipline us or reprove us. Keep reading with me. He says, For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Now let's read the next two sentences out loud together. Y'all ready? Here we go. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? 
Whew. Father Mark, I, I just prefer to talk about how God loves me and how God is in, the, is, in the, is in the trees and he's in the birds and he loves the, the, the animals on the endangered species list. Well, that's not what Hebrews is saying. Hebrews is saying that our God loves us and he loves us passionately. He loves us so much that he will discipline us or reprove us. Why? He will allow us to be tried for, a, for, for discipline's sake. So before we talk about what God does, let's talk about who God is. Amen? First thing that we need to know about God is God wants you to go to heaven more than anything else. So whether you want to have a good day or a bad day, whether you want the saints to win or lose, whether you want it to stop raining outside or not, whether you want money or less money or more money, God, when he, when he looks at our daily life, God sees the whole thing all together, and he looks at our life through the lens of heaven. He wants you in heaven. And when we're over here on earth, and we're going through something in life, and we say, God, I need help, God is going to answer the prayer through the lens of what gets us to heaven. God wants you to go to heaven more than anything else. Now, who wants to go to heaven? Raise your hand again. Because there are going to be some moments in life where God is going to stretch us and he is going to challenge us so that we make sure that we are focused on heaven. That's what we're destined for. We have an immortal soul and a mortal body. And after this body is going to dust, our soul is going to live forever. And God wants it to live forever in heaven. Number two, God wants us to live on earth in him. Right here. This is where you and I are supposed to live. In God. Now we get tempted to check in with God on Sundays or during our 15 minutes of prayer in the Adoration Chapel. I'm going to check in with God and I'm just going to go to work and get through work. She's going to pay the bills. She's going to cut the grass. And I'm just going to go through life and go to, go to school on my own. No. God wants us to do all of that in him. So when you go to work tomorrow, he wants to come with you. When you, when you try to, to wrestle with your spouse, he wants to be in that wrestling match with you. When you try to raise your kids, he wants to be in it with you. God wants us to live right here. Not out there. In him and with him and in him. St. Paul says it's in him we live and move and have our being. And number three, God will do whatever it takes for those two things to happen. God will do whatever it takes for us to get to heaven. Right here. He'll do whatever it takes for us to get to heaven. And he will do whatever it takes for us to know that he wants to be in our lives. Including disciplining us. If we're honest, if we're real, every one of us has patterns in our life where instead of living in God, we, 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 we go off on our own. You might say to yourself, but Father Mark, I, I live a good life. I treat people nicely. And then there's a little, you know, you, you love the Internet and, and anything that you can look at on the Internet or your smartphone or TV. You kind of get in, involved in some racy things there an area of your life that's just kind of turned away from the Lord. Or for some of us, you live in a good life, here with the Lord, but, but love to gossip. Woo! You can gossip with the best of them. An area of your life that's just turned away from the Lord. You say to yourself, I'm living a good life, I treat people nicely, but my money is my own. Kind of cheat on your taxes, lie here and there. Maybe you might take something that, that's yours. You see, a lot of us, myself included, 
We basically are oriented toward God. You wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. You want God. But there may be an aspect of your life that's turned away from God, that's going in the opposite direction. So why does God allow trials? Why do we struggle sometimes? Because God is trying to get our attention. Amen? So when you struggle there, God's going to let the struggle. He might even cause the struggle. Why? Because he wants to get our attention. God wants us to go to heaven. And if that area of our life is turned away from him, God's like saying, hey, hey, stop. Come back over here and be with me and live in me and reside in me. Number two. Not all the people I hang out with go to church. Not all the people I hang out with live in church. Not all the people I hang out with love him. There are people in my life, I have relationships with people, and they're not godly relationships. I, I, want, I, I, try to, I try to make that relationship founded on Christ, but they're not there. A lot of us have toxic relationships in our life. People who actually pull us away from the Lord. We're going toward God, we want God, and all of a sudden we have a relationship with a person, a friend, a family member, a colleague, somebody who you, you just have in your life, and all of a sudden they pull you away. They're pulling you away from the Lord. And God allows drama in that relationship to get us to, to realize that if a person's not leading us toward Christ, they're leading us away from Christ. Amen? God wants you to go to heaven. And he will cause, he will allow drama or strife in that relationship. Or, to be honest with you, I haven't always been a priest. You know, talked about Eve last week, my relationship with Eve. Her real name is not Eve, by the way. You know, I look at my past. There's a couple seasons in my life where I would just prefer to forget about it. The, the door's locked. Skeletons in the closet, you know. Secrets. Every once in a while, I come before the Lord and I say, God, I want to give you my life. And God says, hey, well, what about that secret? And I'm like, God, I want to give you everything in my life except the secret. You are as free as your secrets. Say that with me. You are as free as your secrets. One more time. You are as free as your secrets. So here's what happens for most of us. Not all of us. Maybe you, you've, you've dealt with your secrets. But some of us, we got something in the closet over here. It happened when you were a kid. You're embarrassed about it. It happened when you were in college. That's all my stuff right there. Maybe it happened, I don't know, most recently. You just want to forget about it and move on. And what happens is just whenever you think you're free enough to go with the Lord, it trips you up and brings you back. God wants you to go to heaven. He wants everything in our life. And so God, to discipline us, will ask us to go back sometimes into the very difficult parts of our history to bring what is in the dark into the light. Because when that which was in the dark is in the life, we are now free. It has no power over us. Every time I have done that, every time I have said, all right, Lord, I'm going down that road, but I'm only going with you, he comes with me. We've gone into my past, opened up that door, Bam. Lord, I give it to you. Go to confession. I just give it to him, and I'm free. So we've been talking about storms. We've been talking about how life is difficult for the last three weeks. And this week, sometimes life is going to be difficult because we have things in our heart that needs to be shaped and shifted and brought back into relationship with with him. Amen? Everybody look at me. God loves you. But God is not Mr. Rogers. Say that with me. 
God is not Mr. Rogers. Now, mean it this time. God is not Mr. Rogers. God is not going to come up to you and say, hey, let's talk about the people in the neighborhood. God is not going to sing songs to you. God is not Mr. Rogers. God is a lot more like William Wallace. Raise your hand if you saw Braveheart. Best movie in the world. If you didn't see it, you got to go rent it today. That's God. God is a fierce lover fighting for us. God wants you to go to heaven. He wants your salvation. And there's a lie that is gripping us in our country that says the life that you live right now is as good as it gets. The best that you can do is cope through life and buy another thing to manage your life, to make you happy because you're not happy. You can be free in life now on this side of heaven. Your life can be transformed now on this side of heaven. And God, that God, is fighting for all of us so that we would have our lives transformed now. You want to know what God's dream is? That when you go to Walmart and Thibodeau, people would walk up to you and say, I don't know, you must go to Christ's Redeemer. Because they got transformed people over there. You want to know God's dream? Is that when, when people see us, they see Jesus. They don't see people who went to church on Sunday to check in with God and just went back and hoped that the saints win the Super Bowl and that your year hinges on whether the saints win the Super Bowl, whether you win the lottery, or maybe God answers your prayers. God loves you. He's longing for you and I to be free. And he will discipline us. So I say, Lord, have your way. If there's anything preventing me from you, Lord, have your way. Take it. If you need to discipline me, Lord, I give you permission to discipline me. And Lord, if there are things in our life that we need to repent for, Lord, we repent. Lord, if there are things in our life that prevent us from you, then, Lord, take it so that I can live with you here every day, every moment of my life. I want you more than anything else. So I'd about you to look up here right now. Just, just look at him. That God is fighting for your soul. That God is fighting for you and I to go to heaven. And that God is fighting so that you and I right now might live in him. So if there's something in your past that he needs, hey, he will show you. He'll do it with you. Do it together. There's a relationship that needs to be severed. What you're waiting for, now's the time. And he will show you how to do it, when to do it, but he'll do it together with you. And if there's a pattern, a sin that you just keep going back to, it has never made you happy, and it's not going to make you happy. He wants to talk about that pattern with you together. We celebrate his discipline because I celebrate him who loves us fiercely even when we are disciplined in our trials. Amen?